good evening everyone or good afternoon depending on when you're tuning in um, what we're going to do today um, we're going to do another edit um, this time we're going to do like an astrophotography type of edit um, this one also includes a pretty impressive aurora um, and also the milky way so the reason i thought i'd do this one is uh, it's coming into winter generally the skies are a lot clearer uh, and you generally get a lot more night time based on the shorter days um, t people tend to, especially down here in Hobart, tend to uh, head out quite a lot on winter nights for some crazy reason to go and capture the Aurora or just the Milky Way. So um, what we're going to do tonight is just show you how I do a basic edit of an astro type of image. Um, I've just put up there the before and after image just here. So we're going to start with this one and we're going to try and replicate it to how I edited uh, a little while ago when I took this shot. So. As you can see at the top here, that this was taken back in uh, October uh, 2015, uh, about quarter past eight. So again, nice early nights with the sun going down. Uh, it's 15 seconds, 2.8, uh, 1600 ISO, and shooting at the equivalent of about 14 mil in the full frame or 35 mil standard. Um, when shooting nighttime shots, uh, you you need a, the fastest lens you can possibly get. So the fastest lens being the one with the smallest aperture, letting the most light in. Uh, you'll need to have your ISO or your, your sensor sensitivity cranked up a little bit. So instead of going for something like 100 ISO or 200 ISO that you would try and shoot most at times during the day on a tripod, uh, night time you want to you become um, a bit more sensitive to the light that's there and a lot more sensitive to the stars and, and picking up a lot of these stars that on a lower ISO the sensitivity won't see. Um, so I always shoot generally as a, a, a ballpark sort of starting area is about 1600, uh, always at 2.8 or, or lower. Uh, and 15 seconds is always a pretty good way to start off as well. So to, to me, astrophotography, is, I don't find too difficult because the settings are, are generally the same through a lot, of, a lot of scenarios. So 15 seconds, widest aperture, ISO 1600, uh, and you're gonna get something straight away. Then it's just a matter of playing with your exposure time and potentially sometimes your ISO setting may be going a bit more or a bit less. Um, so anyway, we'll get into it. We'll have a look at this one. Uh, so I'll just reboot it back to the start. So this is Mount Wellington, uh, which again is the, the big mountain that overlooks Hobart. Um, becoming quite famous for its um, auroras and um, uh, star photography, mainly because we get very clear nights down here. Um, being on top of Mount Wellington in the middle of October, this wouldn't have been uh, too warm. But uh, if you prepare well and, and rug up, uh, another issue is wind. A lot of issues um, on higher altitudes is with the wind pushing your tripod on or, or making it shaky with that 15 second exposure. So I always try to set my car up as a bit of a wind break, especially up at Mount Wellington, to try and block that wind out from behind me or the, the direction of the wind that's coming through, just to allow that extra stability with the tripod. So, now, um, so once again, with my editing, I always start from the top, uh, usually turn excuse me, I usually turn the clipping on just to see what's, uh, what's missing in detail here. So at the moment the highlights are all looking good. Uh, obviously it's night time so there's going to be a lot of shadow detail loss but clearly this image isn't about the shadows down the top or the detail down there. It's all about what's happening up here. So with the shadow one I'm just going to turn it off as a general rule. Um, working down, uh, starting from the top, colour temperature. Now a lot of people I find with their astro shots, and again this is personal preference, but I find a lot of people, is pro color temperature is probably something people don't touch um, as much as I think they should be. So sometimes you find a lot of people doing their shots and they come out looking really orangey like that um, or they go the other way and they come out really, really blue. Um, I set my eyes, uh, sorry, I set my temperature, color temperature in my camera to auto, shooting raw, uh, and then I come back and uh, adjust that later on. So I'm not a big fan of the warmer skies because that's not how it looks to me with my eye. I always find uh, that the, the night sky, the, the deep space is a little bit on the, you know, just off, you know, just before it starts hitting the blue tinge. So I always drop it down from where it starts at. I always drop it down a little bit. You can see straight away it just becomes a bit clearer. Uh, it's a bit cooler down here uh, and, and you're sort of getting a bit more of an, an even tone across there as apart, apart from the, um, compared to the, to the warmth that it can be if you don't adjust it. Um, moving down, exposure, um, sometimes you can go a bit crazy with this as well. Again, a lot of my photography is all just subtle changes. 
Um, so here I might just bump that up a little bit just to give a bit more oomph in this whole area there and we'll, we'll play around a bit more here. Um, looking at this aurora you can still see there's some beams uh, and some curtains as they would call it through there so that, that's really important not to lose the detail through there so if we if we go too far you, you know you'll start losing those details if you go down too far you, you don't capture enough of them but you can see what I mean there's like beams there and there's like little sort of ribbony curtains there but I reckon we're going to leave it up around about maybe half a stop up just as a starting point uh, contrast now with astrophotography I always bump my contrast up quite a lot um, what that does it really helps separate especially up in the skies here you've got these highlights which are all the stars and then you've got obviously the deep black of space so if you bump that up a bit you can get rid of a lot of that mess that's created there um, just it doesn't just, at the moment it looks like noise and if you start up in the, co the contrast it starts looking uh, a little bit nicer so pulling that back you can see there just by adjusting that same with the aurora a bit of the detail in the auroras and the curtains and the beams become a bit more um, pronounced so I'll probably be pushing up to maybe plus 60 again I'll just to make sure that that uh, exposure is all right we don't want to lose I'm really concerned about here blowing that out uh, we can always fix this bit up here I actually like it being a bit brighter up there but then you lose down the bottom so we'll play around with that a bit later so at the moment I'm just looking at that that the aurora beam there um, the highlights bar I generally don't go to that until later on but I'll, I'll play with it at the moment just um, with a lot of my astro shots especially the aurora um, I guess the, the the meter the aurora can be quite bright so sometimes if you just drop the highlight uh, slide it down a little bit you can start to see that you go from having that glow more so to a defined highlight there you can actually see there's a bit more detail in there um, I'm just going back to that exposure just making sure always checking um, moving down, don't touch the shadows as we said before, the shadow detail here is it's not relevant because it's a, it's a dark night, it's black um, that's just bushland and rocks in front so it's not really important at all um, clarity, um, some people go a bit crazy with clarity and push that too high as well uh, for night photography I find that's not necessary um, in this situation if anything I'd maybe only go like plus five uh, as a maximum just to, to help separate those stars and give them a bit more uh, definition as well. Um, saturation, I'm not going to touch that at the moment. Uh, again, people go pretty crazy sometimes with such you know, saturation with auroras. Um, as you see it with the naked eye, it looks more like about something like that, um, where the saturation is quite low. You can definitely see there's a little bit of colour. Um, there's a bit of misconception there that you see, you know, what's coming out of the camera like that. Well, you don't necessarily. Your camera will pick up a lot more colour and, and detail than what your eye will. Um, but to the naked eye, I reckon it's more looking, almost looks a bit black and white with just a tinge of colour through it. Uh, but we'll leave that just evened out at the moment. We'll come back and have a look at that one. Uh, moving down to the tonal curve, um, obviously there, it is a pretty contrasty image because you've got that high contrast sky and then obviously a lot of black and black and white and black and highlights down here. And uh, So we need to be careful of that. So just playing around with that a little bit. Again, I'm just watching this area here because that's pretty important. I'm not worrying about the top of this, this frame yet because we're going to fix it up a bit later. But down the bottom here, I don't want that aurora belt to become you know, too bright and take away from the rest of the action that's going on there. So you know, we're probably plus 35 is good there. Again, shadows, you know, you can go all the way down and this looks really dark and gloomy. So I wouldn't be touching much at all because it is it's night time. There's a hell of a lot of shadows out there. You don't really need to do that. Um, the luminance, I, have, I won't play around with that at the moment, or the saturation, uh, we're going to leave that back till later. Um, like I said, you can get a little bit carried away and, and through the excitement of seeing these pop up on your camera then you know you come home and edit them. People can get a little bit carried away and then myself included that you know you get a bit um, colour happy. Uh, you go lots of green, lots of purple and lots of blue and lots of orange through the Milky Way but um, so sometimes you need to be a little bit more controlled. Um, moving on to down to the sharpness and the detail, um, again I always push mine up to about 50 for sharpness, um, but with night shots um, you can see there's still a fair bit of noise there. Uh, the noise reduction generally in, in normal landscape stuff I go to about plus 10. Uh, when we're doing night photography I'll go up to maybe a bit more closer to about plus 40. What it does, it just smooths out a lot of that grain, uh, so between probably 30 and 40 based on what I can see there, I'd say maybe we'll go in the middle, 35. 
um, what that does it just gets rid of a bit of the noise because you are using um, an ISO of 1600 um, similar to the film that we used to use back in the day you know the, the lower the ISO that this the, the finer the grain of the film uh, that's that, that applies also to ISO of, of photography on digital cameras so the higher the ISO the more sensitivity and, and the more electronic noise and the heat that your sensor is creating the more noise it's going to create um, in in your frame so in night photography because we're using high ISO, ISO I always bump that up a bit in the noise reduction uh, going down lens corrections again I don't have to do that with mine because it's all inbuilt in the Olympus cameras but if you're using a Nikon, Canon, Sony, Panasonic whatever it may be uh, you'll need to click those on um, post crop vignetting well, vignetting usually gives you that darkened, darkened corners of the image. On this one, because it is dark, you don't really need to, to add there. You can always add it right down. It looks like a pinhole camera and it looks pretty stupid. So again, I don't touch that uh, at all. So the other other thing I do is just this little blue channel down here with a lot of my shots. Sometimes just give that a, a bit of a bump. It just helps uh, punch the colors a little bit without going crazy. Uh, um, so at the moment, looking at that, uh, I'm looking down here, it's looking maybe a little bit dark in this region even though we're going to fix this up at the top here. So I might just go back up to the exposure and just give it a little bit more a bit more brightness down the bottom there overall. Uh, keeping an eye on that highlight of the, horo uh, of the aurora uh, and also that highlight down there we can play around with a little bit there as well. So at the moment, um, if we go back to where we started from, just with some fine adjustments you can see we've, we've um, change that color temperature around to give it a bit more of a cooler space look if that's a, a way of terminology you could use um, up the contrast just to really sort of get that separation through the stars the stars become a bit more prominent this one here especially uh, you can sort of see the gap there I, on my screen I can see a fair bit of noise and a bit of muck in between there with other stars and things like that uh, on this one it's a lot cleaner and that's also a good example of um, just the difference in color temperature you can see that's a bit gray with a little bit of warmth to it that's a bit more darker and uh, a bit of a bit of a cool space sort of feel to it so i said at the start that you know we really like that sky that um that galaxy milky way and through that galaxy galaxy you can actually get a fair bit of detail through there uh, if you were to bump the overall exposure up you can actually see there's quite a lot of detail in that galaxy there we obviously don't want to blow the whole uh, blow the whole image out like that much so what we can do again using uh, something I use quite regularly is the um, the density gradient filter so what we can do is you know this this top third of the image is where we want to play with this area here and I find a lot of times just by adding a bit more exposure just to that section only so if we show the mask overlay there we only want to go down almost to the top of that purple streak there and you can see that the Milky Way drops in there as well so there um, again I'll be sort of starting just to up the exposure a little bit uh, again you can add some more contrast into that area there as well and again you might want to play with the color temperature um, just making it sort of match the rest of that section there something along those lines um, you don't want to go too far with it uh, but if we do bump that up all the way to there we could probably go back to the overall image and drop that overall exposure down of that image so that'll actually help that band um, come down a little bit in the exposure value so we've added that um, gradient filter there we've probably overexposed that a little bit in all that whole section up there um, we've finalized that as being higher but then what we've done is just drop the exposure overall just to just to squeeze that entire scene down uh, a bit nicer in exposure um, so, so pretty much um, after doing all that it, it's just a matter of fine tuning we probably maybe have a look at the saturation um, you know making sure that green of the uh, the aurora is not getting out of control um, you know the purple in the top bit you know you can make that look really silly um, uh, with this one I really liked it because it sort of seemed to have layers so you had to sort of uh, underneath here there's almost like a bit of an orange layer then a, a, a green layer purple layer then a bit more of a darker purple then into the blue so it's almost like a like a four or five story cake there with different layers so just keep making sure that those colors all balance and, and all match in their intensity you don't want sort of something really bright down the middle 
and everything else be a bit soft so just looking at that just want to make sure that I'm not um, making sure it all sort of smoothly goes together um, playing with the orange in that galaxy up the top there might help as well um, but yeah I think um, overall if we go back to where it was from the start um, and this, this is very similar how I would edit almost every single uh, Astro shot or Aurora shot or, or combined shot I would do um, this is a very lucky evening this is a really quite a really strong Aurora um, up atop Mount Wellington and from memory I don't think it was super windy which is helpful um, but yeah I think you can sort of see there that, that that's that's raw out of the camera so with no adjustments and with just a few bit a little bit of fine tuning um, not taking too long at all to do um, just understanding um, probably the most important things with the the nighttime ones I, I find is that color temperature so really playing around with that color temperature not to make it look like it's it's on fire and not make it look like it's um, looks the like same color as the smurf or something like that uh, you just want to get it somewhere that's cool but um, cool as in temperature without sort of going um, overboard with that uh, exposure control on the overall scene is, is really important you don't want to be too dark and you don't want to be sort of blowing it out you want to be able to find that really nice happy medium getting it right there so that's only about a stop over from what the, the camera exposure was contrast is a big one so if you leave the contrast how it is that's back to normal if you see you can pump that contrast up it really pushes those stars into play and creates um, that real sharpness to the image uh, again the highlight slider really with the auroras you know if you took the aurora out of this your highlight slider wouldn't be playing around too much but because that aurora is there and it is quite bright uh, we need to be careful of that band not to not to blow it out uh, Clarity just a little bit of adjustment saturation. I haven't even touched the saturation apart from the individual channels a little bit um, I'd be maybe inclined just to leave that or you know, you can maybe go a little bit less um, Like I said if you go too far, it just looks unrealistic it looks cool to you maybe um, But in, in really realistic terms as I said the auroras sort of look more like that in that sort of saturation so going overboard with the saturation can look a bit crap as well so probably a minus five on that again we haven't touched the highlights of the shadows too much we've just played around with the individual color channels just to make that sort of layering a bit more smoother so you don't have one you know gigantic bright green band across there and then all these sort of pale colors leading up you've sort of got a, a nice balance of of saturation all the way through uh, we played with the, sat uh, the sharpening as per normal i go to about 50 the noise reduction just a bit more here because it is uh, like i said iso 1600 so you need a little bit more smoothness you can do noise reduction in camera on my camera or you can do it outside um, in editing so have a, have a look at your settings about noise reduction if you do it in the camera um, what it does for example if you take a 15 second exposure uh, it'll then write another completely black frame for 15 seconds over the previous one um, to allow that noise to be cut out by that black frame so you have to wait 15 seconds between each shot whereas if you, if you shoot without noise reduction on a lot of cameras it'll it'll just be able to shoot time and time again without having to write uh, an extra black frame over the top of it so I've, I've bumped it up to about 35 there lens correction obviously uh, if you're using other brands apart from Olympus you'll have to tick them off uh, the vignetting you know there's not much I would add to that if I was going to add any to that it would be just minute maybe minus five uh, I didn't try around with the dehaze but I think dehazing again it makes it look really contrasty and a bit dirty so once again I, I wouldn't touch that um, the only other step I would do from there is, is when I look to either print or, or do something special with it I would actually export this image um, into uh, Photoshop itself and this is about the only time I go into Photoshop most times these days I don't really get in there much so once it loads in there, which I'm hoping it will do soon, um, the only thing I do in there is I actually add a, a layering of sharpness to that. So I'll give you a quick rundown how I do that. So uh, what I would do is I duplicate the background layer there, um, and then going up into filter, uh, there is a, in the other section there is one called the high pass. So what the high pass does in the other videos I explain, it, it sort of fine tunes the, the the outline of a lot of the shapes and um, and objects in your scene so you can adjust that that um, radius of how many pixels it grabs this one's really quite low I really just want it to trim around the outside of those shapes so 
what I do then is dropping down in here, changing that to soft light. Now if we zoom in a little bit, I'm hoping you might be able to see it on your screens. So without and with, you can see that I can, I can see it on mine. There's definitely a little bit of a change. It just, um, just gives that little, little extra bit of sharpness to it. Uh, once that's done, that's all I do. I go to the layer, flatten the image, just to squash all that together, which is done. Um, this is where I also chuck on my, my little watermark, which I do sometimes. Uh, so, you know, I put that down the bottom there, something like that. And then uh, making sure I save it back to an 8-bit channel, not a 16-bit channel. And saving it back into Lightroom. So it'll pop up uh, straight away. Oh, where'd it go? Should be in there somewhere. So there it is, um, in there at the moment. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty much how I would edit that one. That's probably the a, a lighter one I've done. Um, I might go through on another another um, video. I'll go through and show you some other ones I've done um, down at Cradle Mountain. Uh, there's some other ones up here. Just um, having a look at before and after. Just playing around with them. Uh, another one with a nice Milky Way galaxy. So we might do another one, but ho hopefully. That gives you a bit of an idea of um, how to go about editing the star shots. Um, they're not that hard. The, the, the main thing I would say is just just be aware of not going uh, overboard with your editing. Um, try and keep it simple without um, making it too saturated. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in that in that uh, color temperature. Just making sure that it that it sits in a nice sort of area of color temperature without looking too warm and and or too cold. So. Uh, but I hope that helps. Uh, again, happy to hear all your comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to do as many videos as I can. Uh, trying to get out and do some adventures where I take you out and show you my failings, which has been the last two episodes. Uh, but um, make sure you subscribe and leave your comments down there. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.